Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my program. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining me from any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contributions on this channel. Please kindly subscribe if you have not subscribed and also click the notification bell so that you will be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. In this channel, I bring information to your doorstep. I bring news from all channels, from every angle. Things that have to do about the world, things that have to do about Africa, more especially Nigeria. I bring it to your doorstep. Some informations that you ignore, some information that you cannot be able to come across. I look for them, I bring it to your doorstep for you to see. Every video you see on this channel is for educational purpose, to keep you up and get you aware of what is happening in the contraption called Nigeria, more especially. I bring the information to your doorstep. They are not lies. Most of the videos you're going to watch here are videos that are coming from the conventional media. And some of us sometimes are lazy to get into it. Some of us are, sometimes are too busy to be able to lay our hand on this. That is why I bring the videos to your doorstep. Watch from beginning to the end. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes so that you can be educated and know what is going on. Let us watch together. At the end, you can go to the comment section and put down your comments. Give your opinion. Say it the way you feel it. Nobody's going to come against you. It's a free world, and this is the social media where people say it and set the record straight exactly the way it is without being controlled. Do that on the comment section. Let us watch the video together as it comes. Thank you. Daniel Boala is uh, a barrister. Is a barrister for Lincoln Inn in London. Thank you so much, and welcome to the program. Well, thank you for having me. It's so nice to be here. Thank you. You see, uh, when I saw the rally yesterday, uh, a question came to my mind. With all this uh, crowd or people who graced the occasion, would that amount to vote for your candidates? Well, um, thank you for having me. For us, in People's Democratic Party, we are conscious of the fact that rally is good. The stadium is good and we've been able to prove it. But uh, our candidate, His Excellency Atiku Abubakar, said in the stakeholders' engagement in Bauchi that uh, it's a good thing that we can pull up the crowd. But the most important thing is, as a party, we focus on the very issue that inform the very issues that inform our engagement with the Nigerian people, which is his covenant with the Nigerian people. I know for a fact that in a rally. You are likely, of course, it will be a mixture of those who have voters' card and those who don't have voters' card because there is no way uh, in a political rally where you say admittance, just like the way you say when you invite VIP to an event, you say card admits. Mm. This one, they don't say voting, voters' card admits. Mm -mm. So um, it will be foolhardy to think that everybody who comes to the stadium or to a rally or, in fact, participate in a walk, you know, uh, uh, walking rally or protest uh, is a voter. But we have our strategy where our primary focus is to engage with the voters. And we have our own uh, database of the voters and how we engage with them. But uh, the rally, it typifies the fact that the Nigerian people are yearning. They are hungry. Mm. There is virtually no part of this country you go to where you find people saying they are satisfied with what is happening. Because... You must have somebody in your family affected by the situation that we're going through at the moment. You must have a close relation who should be in school, in the university, but is not in school for many months and you're concerned about it. You must have family member, distant relations, or even friends who were very good farmers, subsistence farmers, and they believe in themselves, but now they can't go to the farm. Where I come from, the northern part of Nigeria, farming is key. Uh, of course, we have herders as well. And uh, what about small and medium enterprise? Businesses are flying out of the hands of the common man. We have not talked about the insecurity that has buffeted us as a country. You know that there has never been a time where the security situation or national security of this country has been threatened like the way it has been threatened now. In every facet of life you look at, the optics are not good for us as a country. The good thing is that Nigerians have the capacity to decide the future of Nigeria in the next year. If you sit down, then that means you, are, you want the repetition of what you're saying. If you're not comfortable and you want a change, then you begin to look at the candidates who have put themselves forward, uh, seeking the vote of the Nigerian people. I represent the candidate that is the most qualified. 
the most uh, knowledgeable in terms of the affairs of this country. He was privileged and under his administration to spearhead an economic recovery plan that not only had debt cancellation, but were able to pay up the debt. And we left on the Federal Reserve almost about $40 billion. That is the leadership. He faced insecurity during his time. You have Boko, you have um, Sharia in, in the north, you have the Bakasi in the southeast, you have the other one in the southwest and south south pipeline. He dealt with the issue. The issue of lack of unity in the country, he sat and engaged with Nigerian people. As I speak with you, Ijoma, the president just announced his budget for the next year. And the budget for the next year, ha almost half of it, which is 8.8 .8 because it's 20.5 million uh, trillion that is the budget for the 2023 but 8.8 .8, which is nearly half of it is going to be borrowed mm. and that will that means that our borrowing profile is going to go to almost about 40 trillion we are not only mortgaging our future and that of our children we are going to we are coming to a point where we're mortgaging the future of our great grandchildren we are killing the opportunities that they will come to the world to face this is the time for the nigerian people to look at how abysmal APC is. How is APC has uh, practically destroyed the fabrics of Nigeria. Nigerians were known as entrepreneurial people. Well, you can't say that today. Look at the capacity of power we generate and distribute. And yet we have potentials. Potentials in the heart and in the minds of Nigerians everywhere. Capacity to galvanize this effort isn't there. The next three years after the, the, that, the three years in the administration, the next administration, you are going to be paying 27.7 billion of the loan that we collect. That's, that's even where I, that's where I wanted to first of all start this next question. You have, you have given us all the ills before befalling the Nigerian state today: right. insecurity, corruption. You talk about bad economy and all that. But what people want to hear is what your candidates will bring on board. Yeah. What is the solution that your candidate and the party has for? Uh, have for the Nigerian masses, especially to solve this problem? So, for example, we have a five-point agenda. I can run them just fastly. We have education, we have the economy, we have restructuring, we have unity, we are fighting insecurity. So let me start by fighting insecurity. This administration and the APC-led government in the past seven years has borrowed about seven point something trillion naira in defense. We have practically bought everything conceivable to fight insecurity, from Tokano to anything you can name. Yet we are losing the war. What is it lacking? Leadership. Leadership that will hold to account people you tax with responsibility. That is what we are bringing to the table in the fight against insecurity. And Atiku's plan is to see how, at the federal level, we will increase the manpower of the Nigerian soldiers. If you look at the number of the Nigerian soldiers today, you will know that any war that comes to us, to our territorial integrity in twofold, will, will consume us. You have seen the fight in the Northeast. So he believes that we're going to increase the manpower, add up to the equipment, but motivate the people, and then hold to account people you give responsibility. And Atiku has always been known with that. He's going to be in charge of his government. Mr. Bola, you, before now, you just mentioned the kind, of, the kind of economy that you will handle right. when your candidate becomes the president. Mm -hmm. You're going to have an economy that is based on borrowing. And you said the person that will take power after Buhari in the next three years will need to battle. Yeah. And you want to first of all think of increasing the manpower. Yeah. How do you get funds to, to take care of that? Excellent. So I will tell you one Thing that this government is doing which is creating the problem in the first place if you know how much from fuel subsidy that this government is giving out to a few individuals because when you hear about fuel subsidy we're actually subsidizing the fuel to the middle class partially middle class but majorly to the upper class people who have five seven ten cars and people who take the fuel or petrol or whatever is the content out of the country because there is a congressional hearing where they said out of 100 liters 100 million liters that goes out of the country in the quote unquote name that we consume only 60 million or so that is actually consumed in the country or used in the country about 39 to 40 million gets out of the country if you see the value in terms of uh, the amount the trillions then it will tell you that if we remove fuel subsidy we will have enough funds, one, to pay salaries 
and overheads, number two, to embark on capital projects, and number three, to subsidize what is most critical. So, for example, the fuel subsidy is not affecting the common man. The common man does not benefit. When we remove the fuel subsidy, the revenue generated from it, we are going to subsidize, for example, transportation. So people are going to find transportation and life easier. This is, and transportation affects the common man. We're going to subsidize education because education is part of our cardinal uh, covenant with the Nigerian people. Nigerians in the past have produced educated people, but there are no jobs for them. And then it got to a point where educational, the quality of education in Nigeria now is a shame. Whether you're a lawyer or a doctor, if you're going out of the country for a job, they will tell you that your education is inadequate. You have to go through certain things. In 2008, it was discovered that about 4 point something billion pounds sterling, the government of the United Kingdom generate from foreign students who come to study in England. And out of this, they, they say Africans and especially Nigerians and the Asians constitute the majority of them. So we are not only sending our people because we don't have quality education, we're even taking away the capital and destinies of our people. How do we intend to subsidize? So when, when, we, when we embark on this policy of one, the, at the university level, uh, Atiku Abubakar is proposing that we revert back to the period when we had regional government managing the, the, the universities. Yes, restructuring, the combination of, of education, restructuring in education. in education. You know, it was very effective. That's when you had the Leife, where you have these uh, Abuzari and the rest. And they were managing it under a trust fund. So we are proposing where we have an educational trust fund that is going to be between the federal government and the federation units. So the money comes first line charge. And our focus as a government will be on critical aspects of education that impact on the economy, such as science and technology, such as vocational studies, such as, uh, for example, when the COVID broke out in, in the 2020, uh, NIH in the US, of course, spearheaded this idea of vaccine approval, vaccine mm. education and all that. But principally, it was universities like John Hopkins University, universities in Atlanta, and a couple of them were the professors producing solutions to the problem so our, our, we are going to uh, subsidize not just the education in terms of getting people to study we are going to make sure that our universities are beefed up with the needed infrastructure to be able to compete so we are going to compete so we are going to fund research in the university okay. that's what we don't have in nigeria today and nigerians have done pretty well and are doing better in the western world if you have the same equipment in nigeria that you have outside of Nigeria, Nigerians will produce vaccines. Nigerians will produce, Nigerians will produce arms and ammunition. Look at the, the people you call the Yahoo Yahoo. These are intelligent brains but are channeled towards the wrong thing. That's because there's no job, job opportunity for them. And they are Over not better coordinated. Of Nigerian youths are on the streets. And they keep increasing every day. Exactly. So when you have an economy that is open for entrepreneurs, small as, uh, you know, small mediums, look at America, for example. If you take out the owners of the big tech in america you are going to take out close to one quarter or even more of jobs in america the federal government has few few manpower but what they did was they provided an economy that is anchored on private participation of what otherwise called the free market economy there will always be one area or the other where government will intervene i think we're proposing that the government should busy itself around regulation and providing the enabling environment and incentive where necessary but allowing market forces to determine because an economy that is built on private enterprise is much more better and stronger, you can see the world over, from economy that is governed by regulations. And that's what we find in, in, in the government. Okay, I'll give you an example. NNPC was recently made, uh, uh, what do you call it? A liability company. Yes. Well, Nigeria has majority of the stake. Do you know the, sh the, the secrecy that is shrouded around the activities of NNPC as we speak on the eve of election? We just suddenly read that NNPC has entered into an agreement to acquire the petrol filling station of Owando. Mm -hmm. Owando is owned by one of Asiwa Jews on the eve of election. When you hear in the Western world they talk about people rigging election, you think it is just on that day where they will start ballot snapping. No, elections are rigged strategically. This is one of the ways by which election is rigged because when you use that as a conduit, to raise funds for the election, you are rigging the system. So are you, uh, is your party afraid that this is uh, happening? No, we are only concerned. The international committee are aware. Let me tell you, there has never been a time in the history of the country where the people develop confidence in the voting system like now. That which is why you find the voters, voter registration, the upsurge of voter registration.
people are beginning to develop confidence in the process and believing that they can effect a change, this is the wrong time for the government or for anybody, the governing party, to interfere or to rig the process. Look at the name submitted for confirmation, INEC officer. Confirm members of the governing party. Some but of your them party didn't delegates. raise any, any alarm. They didn't uh, come out. No, we did. When, in, at this, in the Senate, on the floor of the, of the uh, Red Chamber, nobody spoke except for Aduda, who was uh, shot down. Because but who is Aduda? Aduda is a member he, of which he party? He is your minority. Before leader. the congressional hearing on the matter, we have issued a statement. Okay. We have talked to the civil society. They even, in fact, raised a lot of you know, attention to the fact that there is an attempt to capture, you probably have covered it, attempt to capture INE. You see, but what you will know about APC is that they are defiant. And history will prove us. Anytime they make up their mind to do something, they will double down on it until they make sure they find their way. Unfortunately for those people who are participating in either undermining democracy in Nigeria, the world is watching them. Embassies abroad and gov foreign government are beginning to identify people who are enemies of democratic values and they are profiling them we will see how you get your visa All right. we will see how you get your investments abroad before, before abroad. you know we will still have time to talk about this whole thing because right. of time we may not uh, uh, continue but before i let you go i would like you to say something about what people are saying that your candidate does not have the experience for, as, as a leader he has never been a governor he was just a vice president it's, do you know of all the argument I've had, the one that is more laughable is this one. If you bring Asiwa Jibola Metinibu, you bring uh, Peter Obi, and you bring Atiku. The most experienced is obviously Atiku. For example, Asiwa Ju has never participated in national politics. All of his life, it is regional politics is known. That is why they have not been able to manage a campaign list. I'm telling you, harmonization of campaign list between their party and his campaign and the governors. They have not been able to do that. They have not inaugurated campaign council. They have, heck, they have not even had a meeting where they ratified those decisions. No experience. Peter Obi does not have experience of national politics. Their highest experience, as you are talking about or mentioning, is governorship, right? Chief executive of states. But he has, got, he, has, he, has, he has a record, track record of what he did in his state. In Lagos? No, I'm talking about uh, the Anambra state. Oh, I, don't, I don't know the track record you mean because there is no infrastructure in Anambra, number one. Anambara was buffeted by several strikes, I remember. I remember he also used religious bigotry, you know, bringing the Catholic and Anglicans, hitting their heads together and governing. We have seen abuse of human rights in, in that place. By the time he left, even some of the monies that he said he left behind, it was discovered that he left in the bank to which he's a shareholder. All kinds of things. He doesn't have the experience. As what he does not have. But Atiku was the chairman of the National Economic Council. You remember when we came, we took off from the military. We were not busy saying uh, uh, we inherited, we inherited. Because responsibility does not apportion blame. You take it, you ask to be voted. So you don't give excuse. They, they went into action. Obasanjo was all over the map seeking for debt cancellation. Atiku was organizing a broad-based approach to economic recovery. That was when we had this telecommunication you know, breakthrough. And that recruitment the jobs it created at the time we haven't been able to find the value chain since then and this is how he now discovered teams of experts that have come to create the institution that has made nigeria enviable such as efcc and quite a number of them what other thing are you going to do about foreign policy Atiku has engaged with international people presidents and vice presidents these people don't have an, that experience at all how can you to a man who do you know something let me be honest with you because there is no time Asiwaju Bola Ame Tinubu, because of experience, has constantly evaded public scrutiny. He was called to MBA. He ran away to London. You don't, and you, don't, you don't say he ran away. Something may have taken him out. No, he went country. to meet with Wike. Then, secondly, they called for the signing of the peace pact. He ran away to London. And his vice president went. When the media called him to appear for a live interview, he called their bluff. He said, I'm not running to be president of the media, but to be the president of Nigeria. But when they have their own political party meeting, like the one for, they are for the women, you see him there live and direct. Uh, and, and he said your party is a party of termites. Uh, we don't it, have time. So it's, it's incredible to call <laughs> PDP a party. Have you checked Lagos? Lagos revenue is about the revenue of 20 states in Nigeria. 20 states. That's the revenue of Lagos. That's Go and check the infrastructure in Lagos. It will tell you that a lot of questions will need to be answered by the way they manage Lagos. And let me tell you finally, late in the report that came out in June, 
it says Lagos is the second worst city to live and work in after Damascus. That uh, is the Lagos he said he built. Vice Abuala, we do not have much time. I would have asked you some questions, but I hope we'll have you join us again on this, on this program. Uh, so we review some things because what you have said today definitely when the apc comes they will take i'm sure they have written down everything and they will give it to you they will make noise it all, it all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much well we'll be speaking with uh, uh, one of the spokesmen of uh, article thank you so much for watching i hope you have been educated with this video i hope you have learned something from the video you just watched please go to the comment section and put down your comments Whatever you think about the video you have watched, anything you have learned that you wanted to share together, go to the comment section and keep yourself busy. It's a free place where people share their opinion. And please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time a video comes out. And also, share the video to your family and friends. Share it to all platforms so that people can get aware of what is happening in the world, mainly in the contraption called Nigeria. We have to keep people on their toes. Keep people informed on what is going on. That is exactly what we are doing. Every video you are watching in this channel is for the purpose of education and nothing more. Thank you so much for watching and remember us. Bye-bye. See you again.